The TNT Go was released at the same time as the R2 in late 2020 to demonstrate their ambitious idea of how a lab dock should be for 2021. But with a lofty price from just over 310 US dollars at launch, it is a tough pill to swallow, especially when the wireless version works exclusively for the R2. It's a flexible, compact and sleek device. You could use it as a tablet to serve the web and on social media, or as a computer to write essays and lengthy emails. And because it's a lap dock, everything you do stays on the phone. The 2K touchscreen is accurate, bright, crisp and sharp with wonderful contrast. The two firing speakers are decent, though a bit flat, but at least they don't vibrate. The kickstand is very sturdy. The trackpad is responsive and accurate, unlike other lap dogs I have reviewed before. And the whopping 10,000 mAh of battery could easily last for a solid working day, which then could be topped up by a 55 watt charger that came from the box. If you choose the wireless model like I have, you'd also get the Smartisan pencil bundled in. And it is more than just a party trick on a sketchpad. It also works on third-party apps like Microsoft Word and OneNote, allowing me to sign documents and make notes that syncs with OneDrive. Other tech reviewers even managed to produce some impressive artwork with it, but with latency as apparent as this, it takes me a great deal of patience to produce anything as serious as this. And this is not the only place where they cheaped out on quality either. The keyboard is really mushy, lacking any tactile feedback. It also doesn't disable itself when folded back, so keys would continue registering inputs, especially when you're on your lap. The kickstand could only be permanently fixed through adhesive, not magnets. IOs are limited to just two USB ports, and there are no SD card slot or headphone jack. Smartisan marketed this device as your next generation PC, and TNT 2.0 delivers a very PC-like user experience, much better than Samsung or Huawei. From managing files in general to web surfing, it is no different to a normal PC. In some areas, it is even better than a PC thanks to thoroughly designed UI that makes it extremely intuitive to use. However, it is still no complete PC replacement because it is still Android OS in its core. So, not a lot of apps support desktop modes. And even if they do, they are just a bigger Android app with limited features. But if you could work within its limits, it is a perfect blend of Android tablet and Windows Ultrabook. With all things considered, it is still a solid piece of hardware for demonstrating the feasibility of mobile computing. The only complaint I have is not being able to use this device vertically, which doesn't make sense for a device like the TNT Go and the fact that it is only optimised for the Smartisan R2. When compared with other phones, the experience becomes very inconsistent. Wrong aspect ratio, glitchy pen input if it works, cursor that plays up when it likes to, and so on. Even if nothing plays up, Non-R2 smartphones all have to be physically connected by software restriction, which again does not make sense for a device like the TNT Go. 
and with Smartisan pulling the plug on its smartphone operations, there won't be any more successor to the R2 to help it continue realising this future, and it would only become as useful as a secondary display once the R2 becomes obsolete. So I cannot recommend this to anyone other than hardcore desktop mode fans. And this is the same verdict I have given on other laptop products. But if you are one of those hardcore desktop mode fans and you want to try this, then you may have a chance to buy this entire setup as I am in need of selling it. Do look at the details in the description if you want one.